there. Right. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Some Dutch people in chat, or at least one. <laughs> no shot. I drop by to spoil myself. The biters drop resources votes, and he's actually live. I really don't get why everybody likes to watch that live stream of the biters for resources mod. It is one of the grindiest and slowest playthroughs I have ever done, and somehow it's also getting. <laughs> more views on my secondary YouTube channel than my main video series. I absolutely don't get it. <laughs> How did you get this many fish? Well, you can deconstruct fish. Like so. And if you have fish in, in your hand and you hold the Z key above the water, you can drop them back in the water. So Basically, we are trying to slowly fill this uh, pond up with fish over the course of the playthrough. But enough of that. It is just a short evening, so... Uh, let me quickly explain what the goal of today's stream is. So, last Sunday I was planning to design and make a complete Mark Tree module area. And then I kinda got carried away in individual green chip designs which can reliably produce compressed spells of green chips doing UPS, thinking about UPS optimization, etc, etc. That is kind of the wrong approach. Sure, we gotta get there eventually, but for now the important thing is to just get a module area set up. <laughs> um, so yeah, I kind of went overboard a little bit in designing like optimal furnace designs and compressed green chip belts. We don't need compressed green chip belts, we need like three belts of green chips and just uh, we need just a bit of everything to reliably make the modules and it's not yet important to make these fully filled up designs. However, I got carried away, we didn't get, we didn't complete the, the goal of the playthrough or, or the goal of the stream, which is finishing the, the design of this Mark III module area, which should be able to produce 10 Mark III modules per minute and we kind of calculated that was a fast enough rate to provide the base with modules to build the 1k science per minute base. The 1k science per minute base is going to be a stepping stone on the way to 10k SPM and once we uh, got the 1000 science per minute base up we can research deep into the tech, into the, we can research deep into the tech tree to get high level of mining productivity which is required for 10k SPM. And then we can switch the 10. Uh, then we can switch the 1k SPM base over to produce modules itself, and that will produce a whole lot more than 10 modules per minute. And we can use those modules to build the 10k SPM base. So yeah, the Mark III modules are by far the most expensive element of uh, of any mega base. You can see a single Mark III module costs like 2,000 copper, 1,000 iron. 400 plastics and a bunch of other stuff so and every one of these assemblers can fit four <laughs> so that's a uh, that's like over 10,000 resources just to make the modules for one assembler and of course for 1000 science per minute and 10,000 science per minute you're gonna need a lot more than one assembler so literally millions of resources are going into those modules 
which is why we are going to build a separate base for those because our starter base was multifunctional. We are producing like a trickle of modules in here, but the main function of the starter base is to produce uh, signs. We're slowly researching mining collectivity 9, uh, some damage upgrades, some bot speed upgrades, and we're also making all the stuff to make all of the other base building elements, like assemblers, miners, roboports, beacons, etc. etc. So the Mark III module production over here is just uh, one of the many things that we're producing, and that's not gonna cut it in time. If we would rely on this for module 3 production, it would take like hundreds of hours to produce enough of them. And with this puppy, we should be able to get them in roughly 20 hours or so. Alright. <laughs> Guten Abend. <laughs> Guten Abend. <laughs> Guten, guten, guten Abend. We forgot the Ö, the, the line through the Ö. I think I'm not that good at Danish. Uh, the pond is green by pollution and is getting blacker by the moment because we start to insert more and more fish. Also, these strange lines are on the Chang border. Uh, basically, if you go a short distance away, the, sh the Changs get deactivated one by one. And as soon as a fish swims into an adjacent chunk, it gets stuck on the border until we get close by enough again. Let's try to visualize that. <laughs> and then we'll get started. And now they should start swimming again. Yeah, okay. Right, they got unstuck. Right. Let's load the save and we're gonna get started. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Goal of the day, uh, finish this module 3 design. And I'm going to show off some of the things I've been working on. Um, this is a blueprint book, blueprint book, Mike Learns Clocking. It has a bunch of blueprints. I um, upgraded my initial design to a clocked design. We're going to go over those a little bit and the differences and what clocking is and why it is useful. So I'm nowhere near being an expert at clocking, but I do understand the basics and why it is important. It, Clocking doesn't really cover uh, why it is important. So we'll go over that as well a little bit. But first we're going to do a little bit of uh, household tasks. Uh, so let's load the end of the stream. Oh yeah, also I did install the editor extensions mod and here are also my designs. Let's just quickly load that just for fun. So this is where I've been designing my, uh, my builds. We've got like a a clock to design over here with the uh, nice wires and some of these circuit conditions. And here we've got an overclocked design, which we'll get to. And here we've got the green chip UPS optimal design as far as I could optimize it. Uh, there's probably better designs out there, but this one is mine. <laughs> there are many guns like it, but this one is mine <laughs> and I'm going to use this one. All right, let's go. <laughs> Alright, so I also, now I install this um, this extended editor thing, you can, open, you can open that without disabling achievements, which is kind of not, uh, not nice, but uh, it, is, uh, it is too useful to have it around in order to not use it. Alright, so one of the things I want to do, we have been cutting the, we have been like producing barely enough low density structures for such a long time now. You can see the, the, the chests are empty, the belt is not empty, but it is also not backed up. It is backed up around here and we're launching rockets. We, we are producing yellow signs from it and I just want to ensure that keeps going. So just like with the red chips, we're going to up, upgrade low density structures to the Mark III module thing. The thing is that requires like 80 Mark III modules for those and a couple more, it's like 100 Mark III modules. As we just went over, a single Mark III module is like 10,000 10, plates. So that's a... <laughs> uh, wait a minute. Where did we see that? Ah, here. 
a single Mark III module is like 3,000 plates. So that's going to be 300,000 plates of modules in there. For reference, 300,000 plates is roughly enough to start to uh, to launch the rocket from the start of the game. If you if you are really sparse with your resources, that is 300,000 resources, and that is just the module trees for this build. The problem is I do not have enough module trees. Uh, let's grab my inventory from here. We can switch this back on. So we don't have enough Mark III modules. Let's see if I still have some Mark I modules laying around. So then we can use some sort of trick. Um, first of all... So yeah, I'm using my Mark III modules here in the design process, but I may as well just design this with placeholder modules. So I guess... Um, So I guess we can do, we can upgrade but in quotation marks because it's really a downgrade. We can downgrade all Mark III modules to Mark I modules in the design phase. We'll only need the Mark III's eventually when we really are going to build it or test it, I guess. And that should get me back a whole bunch of modules. Alright, did everything got remembered correctly? It does look like... It does look like it. I think I forgot to put productivity in this oil stuff. Oil stuff is not finished yet. Alright, but now I got like 250 of each module type. So with this we should be able to... Productivity module, the low density structures. Alright, so these things have a crafting speed of one and a half at the moment. This last one has crafting speed two. I bet if I upgrade this to Mark 3, it's gonna be too slow. 0, 7, 5, 1, one and a half. It didn't drop that much, but we probably need to upgrade the beacons as well. Right, now up to crafting speed 3 and 1.75. So that is, that is uh, pretty good. This copper belt is not going to be able to supply that though, so... I guess we can sneak some more of those requester chests in there, which bring some copper over. And that should help us get copper to the last ones. We'll see how this goes. Let's check how much low densities we were producing. So we have been producing roughly 104 a minute for the last hour. And for the last 10 hours, roughly. <laughs> okay, the, the, it's already spiking up, so that's a good sign. 140. Alright, so that should be a lot better. Eventually now this belt should back up. Let's say after half an hour or one hour or so, this belt should back up. And we should have low densities going in these chests. Which means the automated production of Spider-Trons is going to resume. Because yes, we have got automated Spider-Trons. But we haven't produced a new Spider-Tron in ages. Since we're out of low density structures for the chest, since we are prioritizing science. We still got a bunch of those left over, so I guess let's also upgrade the other most expensive things like blue chips. I guess I can just use the upgrade planner, but I'll downgrade instead. Right, now these guys have crafting speed 3. That is way too fast, but it, I guess it's alright. We get the productivity bonus, so that's good. Let's see, at crafting speed 3... At crafting speed 1, this uh, consumes two electronic circuits a second, so this is... Yeah, at crafting speed 1, two electronic circuits a second, so it consumes six a second. So this consumes six times eight, 48 a second. 
Well, I guess we could theoretically provide something near that, so yeah, maybe it's all right. All right, the other most expensive thing we've got is obviously the rocket control units, since they also require processing units. So those are basically pros blue chips uh, plus a little bit extra. All right, 10k solar panels, that's nice. Alright, what was the old speed of these guys? Uh, 2, and now it's 1.5. Okay, so we are losing like... I think these were very fine-tuned as well. We are losing a quarter of the production, but we're getting back 24%. Productivity bonus is roughly roughly equal, but not entirely. Don't really want to do this, but I guess I'm going to. Ouch, that was expensive. But now we're going to be backing up these guys pretty soon as well. You can see they were not backed up, so this is also pretty on the edge, so I should not produce less of them. All right, so those have been updated as well. Science is balanced right as it is, and I think the rest is not expensive enough to care about. So that's going to conclude our Module 3 adventures in the base. Hello, let's check the... Yeah, looks like, uh, looks like production is reliably higher now. And uh, processing units... Um, that does not really have seemed to gone up. Uh, it is backing up, that's why it's not going up. So basically we are using less resources to make the same amount of blue chips. All of these have switched off because the, ch the belt is full over here. So that is good news. We'll be using less resources to do this, so we have more resources, say, for low density structures or something. Or like uh, red chips, because red chips is struggling as well, it seems. All right, so far so good. Um, yeah, I guess, guess this is all right. So first thing I want to do, let's make a blueprint of this guy. Uh, this design is finished. This is the module thing, the module assemblers. So we can just get rid of this and save a bit of space. Uh, I guess we'll use this for now. I need the space so I can lay out my old and new designs, the clocked ones. Alright, let's just put these somewhere over here. And I guess I'll first go over the furnace designs. I should grab some more beacons, I think. Uh, I also should grab some stack inserters. Or at least some like stack filter inserters, actually. Bunch of beacons. What else we got? I think I've got the rest. Uh, I think uh, the labs should have productivity model 3 already for a long time. They have speed 1, but the base is, the base is designed uh, around speed 1 beacons and productivity module 1, except for in a few select things because. When you just start out, you don't have the resources to make infinite Mark III productivity modules. So only really using them in purple and yellow signs. And for the rest, the whole base is Mark I productivity module. But yeah, now that we are getting further into the game, we can basically start upgrading the base to produce more stuff. So we can produce more other stuff faster. <laughs> right, I'm going to make a save because we did the household task, 79. Household tasks done. Alright, 
so now we're going to compare the designs. I started this blueprint book last time, which is my initial design. I designed this on camera last time. So with Mark 3 productivity and Mark 3 speed on both sides, you can get away with 13 furnaces and you have just a little bit of overproduction. Let's also put one of these here. So the lights don't blink. Alright, so this is not bad. We have one inserter per furnace, which is the minimum amount of inserters you need per furnace. These guys have stack inserters because the belt is filled up irregularly and a fast inserter cannot keep up because um, basically because the belt is too full and this guy needs to wait too long to put away all of his iron. Uh, this helps because it can grab 12 iron in one swing. It can more easily find the gaps and fill those. And then the last furnace over here is split between two outputs and we sideload those onto the main belt and that reliably compresses the output belt. That is what we did last time. I guess we'll hook up some of these uh, infinite things a little bit later on. For now though, let's go into the clocked thing. Let's actually just put that book on the bar here. So I made a green chip thing and a furnace thing. And let's switch off this. I'm just gonna grab one. I put it exactly the same. And you can see we are missing some of those combinators as well as some modules. <laughs> That's annoying. Let's go grab some modules. Five should be ready. And looks like I will need to craft, uh, I will need to automate those um, circuit uh, network things anyway, because we're going to be using those for inserter clocking. Alright, I got uh, a bunch of those again. So at least when I test out this setup, it will work at full speed. Alright, let's get rid of the spider for now. Alright, it's getting night. That's annoying. Some random lights. Alright, so they basically they are exactly the same design. If I just overlay this on top, all the furnaces they just match up. All the belts match up. I didn't change anything of that. The only thing that did change is this clocking stuff and we'll go over that uh, I guess now. So what I learned, what I learned stack and servers rule because they they can uh, they can pick up 12 items in one go instead of just three which generally is better because they have to swing less often but the thing with furnaces is basically as soon as there's one iron plate in the furnace any inserter just grabs it and tries to put it on the belt also the stack inserter so what we need to do here is we need to build a clock basically we have uh, this is this looks maybe complicated but it is fairly easy and let's get rid of this guy for now so we basically have two elements to the clock. We have a constant combinator, which just outputs a value, 48. And we've got this guy, which takes the modulus of uh, 48 over uh, 9600. So basically there's going to be zero. Uh, how to say this easy? Basically we, we are dividing 9600 by 48. And we are just... Uh, if you look at the clock here, this thing is just counting up to 9600 and then resetting. So that's basically what it does. It counts to 9600 in steps of 48. Uh, every tick it adds 48. And those two, those two values together make a magic number. Uh, every time this value resets, it's going to be under 48 for one tick. And in this one single tick, these inserters get activated. If I slow down time, you can see it in the in the right side here. With a bit of luck. How far are we? Okay, it's uh, gonna miss it. 
Yeah, I missed it already. <laughs> Basically, this will output. A, I can. I, I'm just going to go in editor mode so we can do it tick by tick. <coughs> Alright, give me time control. Alright, so now the value is at. Uh, at 9.1k, you're going to have to be watching in this mouse over thing. Um, so now we have 9.1k, I'm just gonna go further, further, further. This guy will output uh, the signal C, which is that value, and this value, when it's under 48, this thing is gonna output uh, just a signal, iron plate equals one, basically. So let's take further. Now this the right. So now this value is exactly forty-eight. Now for one tick, this guy is outputting a signal. Iron plate equals one, and the next tick, that signal is gone again. But now that signal arrived at these inserters, and this inserter is now active. It is waiting for source items. But when I go one tick further, right now, it's again disabled by control behavior. So basically what, what this clock is doing, it is not important, that's what I thought first. Why would it be important to clock the inserters and they swing all at the same time? How does that help? But the clocking is not the thing. The thing is, you switch off these inserters and they go to sleep and they don't consume UPS while they are sleeping. So basically, they swing once. Uh, they swing once with a full stack of 12 plates, which is what this clock is for. It basically resets every time this iron furnace smells 12 plates. So it swings with a full hand. And then it just goes to sleep until the furnace has produced another 12 plates. And that is a huge, huge help to UPS. Let me go into that um, editor lab thing. <coughs> where we can see it in action. All right. So here we just play time. We can see the inserters are not outputting until there are 12 plates in the furnace. And then they grab 12 plates and put it on the belt. So you can, we can see here it grabs 12 plates and it puts them on the belt and it only grabs them every 12 plates so if you look here it says disabled by control behavior except for one tick so the inserter is going, only going to be active one time every cycle for the duration it takes to put these on the belt and then it's just going to sleep and not ask for updates until it gets activated again by uh, this decider combinator so yeah, now this is actually consuming UPS. But the thing is, we can clock up many inserters to um, to one single clock. So the like three, the like the three, the three actions which needs to be done to update these values is uh, gonna pale in comparison to the amount of times uh, tau the amount of it's gonna pale in comparison to the amount of time thousands of inserters are going to sleep and not request updates. So, I have a couple ones running over here. So, let's first load the unclocked ones. This is my original design. This is the design which we made uh, on stream, basically, uh, on Sunday. It is not clocked. Alright, and you can see we're already running at 43 uh, UPS right now. This is the design I made before. So these just swing all the time, swing all the time. They are active all the time. Even when they're not swinging, they're waiting and looking if there is something to take. Uh, the, we've got the stack inserter which grabs more, but yeah, all the inserters are active all the time. Now this is quite a large map. I have... Uh, <laughs> 26,000 furnaces running over here. We're basically smelting uh, 1,000 belts of iron in this map. 
with unclocked inserters. And if we now activate this entity time usage, we should be able to see time. Am I not into editor extensions mod? Looks like I am not. Strange. Right, now it's uh, correct. Now it has gone uh, to the side. Now here we can see uh, how much update time these inserters take. As you can see, it like balances, it goes between 9 and 13 roughly. Let's slow down time. So yeah, it's, uh, it's jumping all over the place from 15 to uh, 17 to 9. But yeah, it's pretty high on average. We're getting like... Um, looks like we're getting about 45 UPS in total. So basically, if the total update time goes over 16.666 milliseconds in total, not just the entity time, just in total, we now have a frame cycle of 22 instead of the 16.666 maximum, which you need for 60 UPS. But yeah, this is pretty reliable, like 45 UPS we get with 1000 bells of uncontrolled smelting. Now let's load up that clocked one. Uh, so this is the final design with the double clocked ones. I am sorry, yeah, we were smelting 2000 bells of iron, not 1000. Alright, so this is the same map, same exact map, and look, we are running at 60 UPS, <laughs> isn't that awesome? <laughs> we have the same, the same uh, 26,000 furnaces, the only difference is, is we have clocked the inserters, and if we now look at that entity time, Where is it? <laughs> Wait, what the heck? The debug option is not showing. Maybe I'm st stuck in time? Ah yeah, okay. I was paused. Okay, we're not running yet. Hmm. All right, what's going on this time then? So we're barely running better. That is strange. You can see the inserter is much lower than it was. It, it is, does not go on to 17 and stuff. Okay, I did test. I did test this before, and I noticed a clear difference. Okay, now now we slow down time, so now we don't need to look at UPS. Just want to look at these values. Yeah, there's now between five, five and mostly around six to seven on average, I would say. So that's like half the inserter updates compared to before. We can see the number of inserters which are being updated every tick. It is equal to roughly, like, let's say around 19,000. Around 19,000 inserters are being updated every tick. So I'm not sure why I'm getting... Huh. Right, maybe it's not as much better as I thought it would be.
Right, I'm confused at the moment. Maybe it's because I'm streaming and the uh, resources of my resources of my laptop are divided different between streaming and this map. If I if I load the map that that I can't handle ex at 60 UPS, maybe resources get divided different or something. Because I did definitely notice the difference when I tested it for myself. Granted, both were 60. UPS at that point. Let's load the unclocked one more time. Not convinced 10k SPM really need that amount of care for UPS. Uh, I agree, but I thought um, I might I may as well do it for at least for the furnaces, because furnace tax are going to be required for every single build. Whereas um, Uh, furnaces are going to be used for every single build, whereas all the other stuff doesn't really matter too much. It's going to be different all the time. The other thing which may be worth it is green chips, because we need just tons and tons and tons of green chips. But yeah, I wasn't planning to dive much deeper into this. I just proudly wanted to show off my results. But apparently it doesn't make any difference. So the entity update date time is higher here, but we don't have circuit network update time. And this was like two milliseconds in the and the clocked one, so that is uh, that is kind of strange though, because there was not that much circuit network stuff going on. So yeah, it looks like uh, I'm either doing something wrong, <laughs> which is probably the case, or I or it doesn't really help as much as I was hoping to. Let's actually check if if these are clocked or not, <laughs> all the way through. All right, so let's play time. All right, yeah, so here we have 14 millisecond entity update, but 2.5 circuit network, that is strange. Alright, so I just uh, deduced that from over here. This was just like 40 and 40 updates from the arithmetic combinator and the decider combinator, which are basically uh, these things. You don't have many of them, I just have one of these for like every every giant stack of of these furnaces these are like 100 100 belts of iron in a single stack and it all runs on the same clock but apparently the total update time for for the circuit network also involves all the wires connected to stuff so now we are using 2.4 milliseconds to update the circuit network Okay, so looks like I don't understand it as well as I should. This this is definitely it is working correctly though. This just outputs the only inserter. Okay, I'm just gonna explain it the stuff anyway because I spent the time doing it. Let's just load the map with just a, a few so it runs at 60 UPS. Perhaps I should learn to, I should also learn how to properly benchmark because 
Now I just went with some of those time values there, thought it was better. Apparently it's not that much better, maybe a little bit, but not really a noticeable margin. Basically the inserter UPS gets more replaced by a circuit network UPS than I thought. It's strange though, because as soon as, as long as this thing doesn't output anything, none of this should be doing anything, so... Also, I know somebody said the stack filter inserts are better for UPS than normal stack inserters, which why these are stack filter inserters. I don't know if that's true or if that's still relevant, if that has been changed in the patch. There's surprisingly little good up-to-date information to find about that stuff. And I don't want to take too much of a deep dive into this because this is something you can get lost in for months, I, I feel. It kind of looks neat though that these inserters just output at the same time. I'm probably just going to keep it anyway for my setup. Perhaps I'll find a way to improve it later on. Maybe maybe I should use more of these clocks and don't uh, and don't uh, like connect 100 of these to a single clock. Maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. Uh, I have to learn more about that, I guess. But yeah, basically these inserters now are all clocked. Uh, these as well, they are also clocked, but these are activated longer. This is where the second clock comes in. So to grab stuff from a belt, you need to keep the inserter activated for longer. Uh, which is... Uh, these just need to be active for one tick. They just grab it immediately from the furnace. And once they are activated, they will just finish their operation. No matter if they are already disabled by control behavior again. So I'll just finish outputting the 12 plates on the belt and then go to sleep until they are called upon again. These though, they just start collecting stuff. Uh, they need to remain active for longer. They need to be active long enough to reliably grab 10 ore from the belt. Which is why this one is set to be... This one is set to be active for basically half the clock time. So the clock time is 9600 uh, in total and this guy is active for the first half of that. That's enough to reliably insert uh, this ore. Now why is this set to 10? I was just raving on about <laughs> how it was uh, so nice that it would pick up 12 items every time. Well, we've got this productivity bonus here. 20% productivity bonus means 10 ore is smelted into 12 plates. So every time these guys output 12 plates, we need to insert exactly 10 ore to keep up. The thing is, if you set this to 12, we can do this real quick. Okay, all of these are now set to 12. And now they sometimes won't activate. It will take probably a while, but they will, they will start skipping. Because there's still enough iron ore in the furnace. And you get the trouble that some of these furnaces will not be active all the time. I'll just speed up the game a bit and we'll see some of these blink off. Yeah, some of these uh, furnaces now blink off. You can just see the blinking. If this heating element is off, the furnace is not working. And pretty soon, if I remove the buffer from this guy. Yeah, you see, pretty soon we get uh, the issue that the belt is not full all of the time. That is what happens uh, when 12 or is... Uh, when the stack size is 12 or you get these uh, gaps in the belt. Let me vis visualize those. So every time there's a white line, there's a gap. And we don't want that. We want fully reliable compressed belts. If you look on the, no on the top one, that guy does not have the belts. Uh, that one does not have those gaps. This uh, southern one does have the gaps now. So this basically makes sure it matches the speed of the furnace and the productivity bonus uh, calculated with it. All right. And there's one more design. This is the overclocked furnace. <laughs> it is not really overclocked, but it produces... Let's actually read the blueprint. It produces 103 
103 and a half percent of a belt of iron uh, with a running at 103 and a half percent of capacity there's a nod to uh, SimCity 2000 the power plants which could run at 107 percent capacity before they would blow up after 50 years <laughs> Uh, all right, so why is this thing here? This is basically because uh, for our build specifically, we need just over two belts of iron. So we made an overclocked design. I also I also made that in the base variant without the clocking. But basically, this guy is the same as the clocked one. It has the 10 stack over here. But instead of only side loading this belt, we produce a little bit of extra iron every now and then. And so we are producing 103.5% or 1.035 blue belts of iron from this furnace stack with the help of these two beacons speeding up this guy. So the only change I made is the extra output inserter. We're still prioritizing the compressing of this belt. It is compressed all the time, but we just output a little bit extra iron every now and then on this belt. So this guy produces reliably uh, 103 and a half percent of a blue belt so with two of those we have enough iron for our module build that is the the whole thing the only change which i need to make is this guy has to be unlimited in the end this one does not have to grab 12 because this furnace is now faster and anyway these uh, we have three outserters here so the concept of Insert 10 to output 12 no longer applies. We can output more over here. This furnace is faster, so we just insert as much as much ore as possible into this guy over here. That is the difference. So we're going to use this one for our iron smelting for the module 3 design. And we're going to use this one for the copper smelting. We're going to need three regular belts of copper and two overclocked belts of iron. And I guess... Uh, I did some UPS stuff on the green circuit thing as well. Not really sure. I'm glad with how it turned out. <laughs> basically, even without the clocking, let's ignore the clocking for now. I basically made sure uh, this guy grabs from the near side of the belt. And there's only half a belt available, which makes it reliable. That makes it reliable for this guy to pick up enough copper plates to keep this guy running at a high enough speed. I did all the tests. Uh, this copper one, there's an underground belt here, which means only the near side of the belt goes through. Here we were picking the top side of the belt, so you can see those gaps here. But we are not picking from the near side of the belt, that cannot pass through the underground belt. We are priority outputting to here, so this is always compressed. We are priority outputting here, so this is always compressed as well. And this guy also just keeps up. These inserters are basically working all the time. They always have resources available. And in the end, we just sideload the remainder on the near side of the belt. So this guy also has access to a comp compressed belt of ore. That basically fixes the issue with the old uh, thing I had. Where I would need, uh, we would need two inserters to keep up with input, basically. Alright, ignore that. This was just a measurement. Uh, as soon as this belt is not fully compressed, I would get an alarm just to make sure I would catch any of those alarms. So we can see this guy, this alarm has not sounded, so it has been fully compressed all the time. Basically, it's, it's this guy is being prioritized and the long belt over here is backing up. I did a cool thing with inserter clocking over here. <laughs> Basically, I made sure these, uh, these two inserters alternate. One inserter still is not fast enough to output, we need two of them. But yeah, basically I made sure they alternate uh, on like clocks which are offset by half a period, which reliably fills up these belts. So there's here, here there's two clocks. We've got this clock over here, and we've got this clock over here, which is intermediate between the halfway points. And only when both signals are true, uh, only when these so yeah this uh, this one when it loops around to zero these two when it's between 36 and 3677 when both of these are true this guy is true and when this guy is true 
uh, the second inserter activates. So the second inf inserter has faced the uh, basically faced the uh, different compared to the other one. Uh, I'm not really great at explaining this. Let's just uh, go back to the playthrough. So yeah, this is basically the result of one day of learning or to clock stuff. Whereas before, I don't really have, I don't really have a lot of experience with circuit networks. I did do the Arcosphere thing and space exploration, but that's about it. But now we did the clocking. I kind of have the idea. I did the clocking correctly. Right, so yeah, this is the old design. It just grabs from the belt randomly. It leaves all sort of gaps, which makes these inserters spend more time to find uh, the 12 plates they need. With the new design, I limited all of these to one inserter each. So basically, instead of using 24 inserters, the new design Even without clocking, we can get rid of the clocking for this one, really, we don't actually really need it. But this design uses only 18 inserters. So, 18 inserters with 6 assemblers. Whereas this guy uses 24 inserters with 6 assemblers. So this guy already is at least 25% uh, less UPS intensive than this guy. Probably more because these inserters reliably just grab uh, stuff from a compressed belt instead of with these which just need to pick up from a belt with holes all around. Iron is doing the same, the first guy just picks up from a compressed belt. From that point on we need less than a half belt of iron. So this guy picks up from a compressed belt all the time and this guy too because we are since we are needing less than half belt of iron this just backs up and this guy has access to compressed uh, belts as well. Let's just quickly uh, test that. I should be able to go into editor mode from here somewhere, I think. All right, this gives us some cool new toys. Uh, this guy is copper. This guy is iron. And I guess we will I guess we'll put that into a chest, actually. We have the larger infinity chest, which is nice when you do, like, big experiments like these. Let's remove unfiltered items. And we'll start it up, and we can see it in action. Let's also start up the other guy over here. We can see the difference. Oh yeah, I got rid of the clock, but the, all of these inserters are wired up, so that doesn't work. I need to unwire them, or I need to... Alright, so now, they are, now the clocking is on. We are outputting the chips. Let's speed it up just a bit. Alright, I'm already thinking why is it not working? It is not working because I downgraded the modules, so everything is not fast enough and doesn't have enough productivity. Okay. Crisis avoided, I thought also this design was not working properly, holy moly. Okay, let's speed up again a bit. Alright, now we should see these belts are compressed. So both of these are deliver compressed belts, only this guy... So here we see when they pick up, the belts get like... Mingle, the inserters are just searching, searching, searching to find the plates. So that is not ideal. Here too, they just uh, picking on the, of random spots, far side, near side, it takes a long time. But if we look to these guys, this inserter just picks from the near side. This got side loaded, it just can pick up continuously from the near side very fast. And this guy too, this just backs up. And also just grabs and puts, grabs and puts, so that's 
quite a contrast to these guys which spend a long time just finding resources. And here on the north side we have that as well, this guy just picks up from here. I don't know how much influence these splitters have on UPS though. It, I think it helps if there's like only one input and or like one output. I'm not sure about that though. But here we can see this too, this can just grab from the near side. This can just grab from a compressed near side as well. These inserters they switch off every now and then because sometimes just these have too many stuff inside. But overall it's fast enough to still reliably output a fully compressed belt of chips. So if we pause the game we can run it for exactly one minute. And we should have exactly... Um, 2700 green chips in there on both of those so if we do the tick custom we run for a full minute let's try to speed it up a bit and this should exactly fill up with 2700 plates so until this slot 100 green circuits all right and we see it's exactly 50, uh, exactly 2700 plates for both of those so these work I did test this for a lot longer than just a simple one minute test so we can <laughs> We can be assured that these work reliably. But yeah, this was the problem with Sunday stream. I just want, I didn't need to do this. I just needed to design the module tree area with good enough, <laughs> with a just good enough setup. It didn't need to be optimized, but yeah, I went down the rabbit hole and now I went even more down the rabbit hole with the clocking stuff. Not great. <laughs> All right, let's actually try to get something done. <laughs> What's the difference between the two? The difference between the two is the uh, the new one. The difference is the new one um, uses less inserters overall. So we have 18 inserters compared to 24, and inserters are the most uh, uh, the most the thing which consumes the most UPS in any megabase, really. Unless you truly screw something up, and servers are going to be the uh, the thing which eats up the most update time. So yeah, less inserters, if you can get the same result with less inserters, is always good. And if you can put some of those inserters to sleep for some time, that should be good as well. Although, I should not uh, call out that too hard, because apparently with the 2000 uh, smelter setup, at uh, the 2000 iron belts of smelter setup, we did not really see a difference due to the circuit network now taking up a bunch of UPS. So yeah, not sure about uh, about that quite yet. Now though, we're just gonna design this, I guess then, I guess we'll just use the, the unclocked variants. Let's use the clocked variants because I made them. They work the same. They don't. They don't seem to cost UPS, and perhaps they'll actually save UPS later on. All right. So, uh, module three area. I did make the blueprint right. I did make the blueprint. This guy over here. So these assemblers are fine-tuned to produce five of these and five of these per minute. Five projectivity three and five speed three modules per minute. So now we basically just need to design the rest. We were working on that last uh, Sunday. We decided we're gonna build it over here. We have an iron patch, a copper patch, a coal patch for the plastics and oil. That's all we need. We do not need stone. And we do not need uranium. And it is nicely located off to the side so it doesn't interfere with our other builds. Uh, then I had this calculator up. I think I'm going to throw us in the calculator just for one brief second so we can see what we need. Alright, um, so yeah, 10 modules a minute in total. We're gonna need 12 blue chip assemblers uh, with 8 uh, or 4 beacons to gather 8 speed modules. I laid out the red chip assemblers. Uh, yeah, I got uh, 24 of those, so that's more than the 22 we need. Uh, we need 
I have it set to red belts. Let's actually set it to blue belts. Electric smelting. Let's use something other like few. Right. So we need uh, the three belts of green chips. A little bit of coal. We need three belts of copper and we need 2.058 belts of iron. That is less than 103 and a half percent. That would be 2.07 belts of iron. So we are under that. So we can use our overclocked iron smelter to produce this amount of iron out of two lanes of uh, smelting. And uh, we need a bit of oil. I think I did the moduling last time. We have like 10 of those. I need to still do the cracking though. I did not do the cracking. I didn't think about cracking at all. Uh, let's say eight. Probably we don't need that many. We have two heavy oil crackers and about six light oil crackers. If we have like eight modules, so we can build. We can build it against the back of a set of beacons with uh, eight modules. Uh, oil refineries are larger, so against the back of a row of beacons, they benefit from five beacons or ten speed modules. Sulfur and sulfuric acid does not need any modules at all, except the productivity inside. We don't need to speed that up at all. And then we've got uh, plastics, which we decided we could build against the back as well. So that's going to be seven or so, a little bit more than six plastic things. So now we're going to lay that out in the actual game. It is night again, of course it is night again. Alright, so first of all, let me grab this uh, blueprint book for the, I don't know how many time. One belt of green chips, we gonna need three of those, like so. We'll just keep the clocked variant with the stack inserters. Um, so I'll just put this in the copy-paste uh, history. Then I can enable my bots and I can just deconstruct this over here. We can replace it with this thing. We're gonna run out of modules again, I guess that's okay. I guess I'll just uh, upgrade from module 3 to module 1. For now. Alright. So that's three belts of green chips. They're not going to be compressed because we only have two belts of iron incoming in total. All of the iron is going into green chips except a little bit which needs to go into um, sulfur. I guess I'll get out of the spider. And we can get started on the finishing design for this guy. Where is my legs? All right. So first thing, I already noticed a mistake. This is output of copper. But this should be output of copper wire. Copper should be coming in somewhere else. So if this belt contains the green chips and plastics, I'm gonna need to have copper on this side. So I guess we'll just underground belt this. This guy will prefer to take from the near side, so we could do something like this. And this guy also has like a compressed thing available. I think I'll just first design all of it, then we'll just switch it uh, on and we'll, we'll troubleshoot any design failures later. Alright, this is probably way too many inserters, so... Is it though? Yeah, let's just no. Let's uh, let's do less inserters, and if it's not enough, we can just add one later. But two inserters should be enough. All right. So 
this guy, because we are using less beacons, should also output a bit on this side of the belt. How much, how much copper? I will quickly check how much copper wire I actually need for red chips over here. So I'll just open the red chips and a new tab. Uh, ignore green chips. Uh, 1.83 belts. The easiest thing to do actually just would be probably should just add another beacon. Uh, let's get rid of this. We'll just add another beacon. And then we also just need to insert us this one. We don't need to worry about belt balance. Yeah, this is the good approach. Don't oversync it, don't super optimize it. Just, yeah, same crafting speed. This one outputs on the bottom side of the belt, this one on top side of the belt. Everything should be perfectly fine here. So yeah, we already don't need to think about that. That is gonna be, if it's not fast enough, we can just add the third inserter. That will solve our problems. Uh, same here, we can basically Let's grab from the middle, that looks nicer. We can basically add another inserter if it turns out not to be fast enough, and that's gonna be all. No clocking, no optimizing UPS. This is a tiny build compared to what we have to do, so... We just This is a build to get started, we should not be oversyncing it. Alright, so... If we should not be oversyncing it... I kind of designed the red chips to go out this way and then next to blue chips together, so uh, we don't need an output on this side. It looks nice though, if it comes out on this side. But I guess it will also look nice if we go out on the other side. So we should just copy this thing. Like so. And then this is going to come out of here. Alright, so we are out, we are inputting uh, copper wire here. No clocking, no oversinking, just building. Let's do fast inserters for the output. We can copy this as well. Alright, without a lot of sinking, this goes. Uh, a lot faster than all of the other stuff I've been doing. <laughs> and then, basically on this side we have plastics and uh, green chips incoming. So we don't need to do any difficult stuff for that. And then we can just fill in these gaps. Alright, that even powers all of the beacons. The calculator is a website, yeah, it's Kirk McDonald. So, I'm just gonna rechat a bit, it's night, lights, it's not really working. Yeah, the calculator is uh, Kirk McDonald, it is one of the, in my opinion, it's a very good calculator. I use it to plan out most of my things which need to be planned out really. I like to do it offline. I can then also mess with it without Factorio open and uh, or if I'm putting stuff in Excel, I, it's easy to switch between Firefox and Excel, not so much between the game and Excel. Yeah, about the, about the UPS of the clocked inserters. I don't know, it looks like... Uh, I don't know where the circuit network is coming in. Of course there were a lot of entities, all these inserters were wired up to one clock. But I would have expected 
the Circa Network to uh, basically render the entire furnace stack inactive, all the installers on the furnace stack inactive. You can see the UPS values on load. The, the problem is, ah, yeah, the UPS values on load in my Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I um, I guess maybe I'll try posting that on the forum and see where I went wrong. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, this day again we can continue designing. <laughs> Alright, so red chips are going to come out of here. Keep this. I think we'll keep that. I guess then this is ready. But you just will need to check. I guess I'll just uh, completely delete this, and so we can just basically mirror this. Alright, so now we got red chips coming out of here. Okay, now the red chips have got to go to blue chips. I kind of want to do, I think I laid it out on top already. I want red chips to come in from below. Uh, side loaded onto this belt and then output blue chips over here and then we already have an output belt of uh, red and blue chips which are, is also the combination we need for the mark 2 modules and I want to have the green chips coming in over here okay so let's actually draw all of these symbols outside Right. So far so good. I guess before we do this we probably will design the oil system first and then we can just snake the belts through. It's a bit easier to snake belts through than to retroactively try to fit all the pipes we need. Alright. So I kind of still have some space against the back of these. I do need to fit plastics against the back of, of, this, uh, of this thing. So actually this may be better suited to put against the other side. Since there that circuit network is not in the way. But let's do that. Let me just flip this whole thing around then. Here goes my bot power. I cannot... because of the <laughs> chemical plants. Yeah, you can you can post links, I think. I don't know if that's disabled by default, but it should be possible. Or maybe if Macha is still in the chat, he can allow it if it's disabled by default. I'm kind of thinking maybe I'll do blue chips on one side. I can just add another row of beacons to the top. And I could probably get away with six or maybe eight of those. We have space for eight. Let me, I'll just quickly type that in the calculator here. If I, so with eight, so with four beacons, I need 11.9 of those. Probably means I need more than six, yeah, 6.5. So basically I need another half. Something like that. <laughs> I could get rid of these and we could do plastics on this side then. That would probably be good. 
I don't need to worry about the green chip stuff. It's kind of wasteful though, that many beacons. Though I could put Kraken against the top as well now. We can bring all of the oil refineries over to one side as well. This can just be anywhere. It's a bit annoying if we have to bring Kraken over to the other side though. You know what, let's just, let's just go back to the old idea. I think that is alright. Grab all of this. It's a bit annoying though with the oil, but I guess I'll survive that as well. Maybe I will have to integrate some lights in the design. I guess let's give in. <laughs> Alright, I want to do the oil stuff. I'm just gonna grab a row of beacons. I'm just gonna do oil cracking on this side somewhere over here. Alright, so let's first lay this out. Let's start up here. Uh, I guess I'll just start with just a normal thing. Okay, petroleum gas. It's usable. All of the rest of the stuff needs to be cracked. I figured I would need... I can probably do less with the uh, heavy oil cracking. So with four beacons it's... 1.4. Yeah, with, uh, with three beacons it's still 1.76. So I could do heavy oil cracking like like so I guess three beacons uh, light oil so light oil uh, let's see uh, I cannot flip this around I forgot I need to rotate these things Light oil, these are affected by four beacons, but this one only by three. So basically I need to check is uh, is 3.666 beacons on average enough. I think I can put like Yeah, I can put uh, non-integer values in there. Alright, I need 5.2. Okay, that already tells me it will be enough. 5.2 with 4 beacons, then I can definitely put uh, one third under one beacon less because we need barely over. Uh, we need barely over 5, and I have already 6. So that should be good. Alright, uh, water. I guess water pipes can be. Water can just go through. Here it is flipped though, so that is a bit annoying. Uh, 
light oil can go through, but not all the way to heavy oil. So with a bit of luck, we can do this. From one side like so. Uh, let's actually try. Looks like I'm a bit short on pipes. Okay, spider. Uh, I'm too lazy to walk back myself. Spider goes to grab some pipes. And he will bring it back to me. Alright, um, still need these somewhere later on. But this should do. I should probably figure out, maybe I can do less beacons still. Now we need to calculate this though. So now we have an average of not 4, but only 3.333 beacon. No, that is not enough. That is exactly not enough. So we need uh, we need this extra beacon up there. Let's just keep it like so. We'll see. I guess we could technically place this on the beacon as well, even though we don't need to. Alright, so we're using more beacons than we need to, but yeah, let's not over-analyze. I want to keep that out of the range of these beacons, actually. Can I... Align this somehow. We'll figure that out later. Let's first try to connect the heavy oil. Spider come back, it should have the relevant stuff by now. Alright, thank you Mr. Spider. Alright, we still need to connect light oil, so I probably should not be using underground pipes in this orientation here. Because if I don't use underground, I can skip light oil over here, like so. This is light oil. And same for here, but here I have a problem because of the water pipe. Maybe I can... <laughs> oh, this is uh, pretty horrible, but yeah. I guess no, I guess here we can do this. We don't need to do this super horrible construction. We can use an underground here, like so, to connect heavy oil. We can just connect light oil over to the other side on top of here or something. Like so. That connects all the light oil. So heavy oil and light oil is connected from this side. Petroleum gas does not need to connect to anywhere. We do need to connect this light oil and this light oil still though. It does not really matter, it's 
we have over uh, over capacity in terms of um, in terms of cracking and oil production. That should never back up. We are not using anything else but petroleum gas, so we would not need any pumps or anything. These pipes should get emptied out by themselves whenever we need petroleum gas. So I think that's going to work without any any hiccups. All right, so that is that, I guess, for these. We can simply put a line of pipes. And now we need to connect that to somewhere as well. I guess we could do something similar. Like we have been doing at heavy oil, where we just bridge petroleum gas over here as well. It should connect to there. Try to make it look at least a little bit nice. <laughs> I guess here it fits better than there. Okay, that, that will do. That's petroleum gas connected. Uh, we need to connect these two instances of petroleum gas. Will that fit like so? No, but it does like so. That is all petroleum gas connected, so now we just got to connect these sides of the oil refineries as well. Uh, heavy oil, oh heavy oil is going to be a kind of a problem I guess. could be done like so, theoretically. It lines up nicely with the beacons. So that is something. Let's try to stick to those three white pipe things. Thanks uh, Akilda for the uh, subscription. Oil is always a problem for me. Oil is always a problem for everybody. <laughs> Especially when you're designing it with all these pipes, all the pipes are empty. It is kind of hard to keep track of what what does what. So systematically I first connected this side, now we're just trying to connect the other side. And hopefully I didn't miss a connection anywhere in the else. Uh, so hopefully I didn't miss a connection in any other location. Alright, this is light oil connected to here as well. Everything is connected without pumps, so that should be good. Uh, then we only need to connect petroleum gas. That should be fairly easy, I feel. Okay, petroleum gas is now connected as well. Alright, so now we could do this without beacons, technically. Uh, water is still need to come from somewhere. I kind of feel if I... If I just connect this to petroleum gas on the way... Like so... Then this guy can always suck in petroleum gas which comes from these two with priority, and then the rest can just go to plastics, but we'll basically always be producing enough sulfur. Basically that's gotta go into sulfuric acid. And water has got to come from here somewhere as well. So this is like uh, sort of a spaghetti, I guess. Water, 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 water. And oil has got to come from somewhere as well, but we don't know yet from where. Alright, this has not to, got to not connect to sulfuric acid though.
All right. Water, 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 water has got to go down as well. And oil has got to go to the other side as well. Yeah, it was a mistake. Design oil on two different sides. Not too smart. <laughs> yeah, this is a, yeah, ba yeah, basically a, a modless run. All of the mods don't really do anything except stuff like show chunk grids, uh, time control. Uh, the most uh, game altering one is module inserter, which is basically uh, an enhanced upgrade planner, which allows you to set the modules for each machine specifically instead of just using the upgrade planner, which uh, allows you a greater uh, control over which modules goes and where. Still, the bots have to do it, so it's basically an upgraded upgrade planner. <laughs> Right, perhaps we can run water and oil just through here. Looks like oil could go here. Uh, no, that cannot be because of the mirror, the mirror stuff. I guess we can connect oil once we set it up here. And we actually know where oil is going to, going to come from. Water perhaps should go here though. Did we connect water already? I did not connect any of this water, I don't think. Okay, that could be water. I guess an oil is going to be like so. Where is this guy going? That guy is going nowhere, so we can delete it. This is oil. It looks a bit stupid, but it works. <laughs> now, no, it does not work because sulfuric acid. We can offset that one or two, or just do it like so. Yeah, that would work better. We need a stack and serve between these. Also, we need to bring iron over here somehow for the sulfuric acid. Sulfur just works with water and petroleum gas, so that is all right. And now we just gotta bring the sulfuric acid. That may be another challenge, actually. What's the maximum pipe length? Yeah, we gotta bring that over the top, I think. We gotta bring it both ways, even. Right, now we gotta find a way through for sulfuric acid. Perhaps I'll just go all the way around with sulfuric acid. I kinda, I kinda added myself into a corner over here. Either that or I should just go shorter pipes.
What did I say again about overthinking stuff? Yeah, I cannot remember either. <laughs> Thanks, 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 This has to look not so nice though, but yeah, so be it. Okay, that should be sulfuric acid connected to these blue chip assemblers. Now we just gotta go all the way down again. Over here, I guess. Here's a disconnected pipe somehow. What is this supposed to be? This is supposed to be oil. Well, at least this looks like a sort of semi regular pattern. Okay, that is actually, it is uh, it's still bad, but it's not as bad as I thought it would be. <laughs> can we do this here too? Looks like we can. Alright. Yeah, it's not as, not as cheaty, but that's, that's the only... I don't even have even distribution installed. I think that one is... I think even this distribution is uh, too cheaty. <laughs> okay, that doesn't quite cut it. Let's make some nice triangles here at least. I guess that's okay. Uh, I think I'll just manually wire it up on this side as well, because flipping uh, and power pole designs does not really go that well hand in hand. Maybe I should start from the other side. Okay, that does at least look symmetric. And we gotta do the triangle thing again. So yeah, this is how you do a 1000 signs per minute map. You just tinker endlessly with design. And by the time you're finally done, even the most crappiest of bases will have produced enough modules <laughs> to uh, <laughs> for what you need. So yeah. Um, oh, that fits neatly as well. I guess this fits neatly as well then. Right, we're getting somewhere. Now all of this needs to be powered somehow. If you cross them, then you should cross them all. I 
cannot reach. Ah, that's the problem. I see. Do we need it? Yeah, we kind of do. Alright, then just let's disconnect these from here as well. It will then have a greater chance that it can connect to something else from the edge over here as well later on. Perhaps like so. Well, it looks like everything is powered. Now the wiring is sort of symmetric ish. So I guess we'll keep that. Alright. That should be oil done. And now I'm just gonna test if if I put the fluid in a pipe. Um, will they go through the entire system? Alright, so I got the uh, gotta just connect everything to one pipe. Basically this could be oil, this could be water. Looks like that automatically set itself to water for some reason. That's good, okay we're doing the oil stuff. Is the water going everywhere? Uh, water is not going in here. Guess I forgot to connect that. Yeah, we could connect water like so, I guess. Ok, so we need to connect water to the upper section somehow. Uh, let's insert a bit of iron into sulfuric acid. Right. That does bring sulfuric acid to blue chips over here. Does it bring it to blue chips over here? It does. Ok, so that's good. Check all the fluid systems, if there are like multiple fluids in something. Looks like no, all of them are nicely separated. This works, these work, all of these are fluid inside. Mm, 7.4k, 7.4k, 7.3k, 7.4k, ok it's just a rounding error I think. Checking if the number is the same everywhere. Okay, that seems to be the case. Alright, let's delete this. Everything switches on again. Yeah, it does seem that everything is working sort of as it should, except that the water was not connected. So that's nice. Okay, then we can load back. At least we know the pipe works as an order, so we can now safely place the belts uh, and we don't need to worry that we need to make changes to the pipe system later, which can be pretty horrible if the belt network is already in place. So now we just need to put water I guess we'll connect it to here instead. And we don't need to move the power network. That should be good. That should connect everything. Okay, that's good. Iron to here is just still going to be something, but we don't know where we will build iron later on. Alright, so no clocking shenanigans on this side. 
I guess we will just design lights as well if we are not caring about UPS at the moment. I don't know if lights take a lot of UPS, but let's do that anyway. Eventually, near the end, when we finally will switch on the entire base, we will probably get rid of the lights and stuff. But for now, everything can be nice and shiny. Yeah, I think that kind of covers it. Alright. Now that it's night, let's also put some lights. Am I out of lights? I'm out of lights. I guess it would work if we just put it between all of these. That would kind of make sense, thematically. Lights up enough of the area that we need to. All right, the only thing we need to connect still is plastics. Plastics, is that annoying? Not really. Just need to do the standard thing where we put a belt on both sides. It's fairly easy with just uh, with just two belts. Just one belt of coal is going to come in from somewhere. I guess we'll use stack and sailors. And the belt of plastic is going to come out. I just need to check how much plastic is coming out. 0 0.9 belts actually. Okay. That's a... Uh, that is a lot. So I actually probably want to split these. How many plastic guys do I need? 6.2, so this one can be slower. I can, I can draw those apart. So basically we just side load uh, half on this side, half on this side. just add the remainder to the belt like so. It's not going to be a compressed belt anyway. I'm already out of pipes again. Alright. That should work. Uh, probably could... If I do this, I can just fit a substation in there. Since we are here with substations already anyway. Okay, and if I just delete this entire stuff, I can even line up the substations, I think. No, I cannot. Meh. This is not enough beacons. I need to do it like so. This would be a straight. Okay, I can make it to that side. So we can just put the... This is the here. One, two, three bells. Yeah, this should be good as well. And the substation is aligned. So we are happy. This substation is aligned. So we are happy. Nice. Shiny squares on the map means we are happy. Alright, so I guess that is plastics. We just need to hook it up, but for that, we need to know how these two will 
be aligned. I guess we could put the puzzle together now. We still need to hook up these red chip belts. They need to go somewhere <laughs> over here. Um, well, like so, that could be the case. This works on this side, but the other side is not symmetric. Will it work on the other side? Already looks like no. Oh yeah, this is horrible. It's mostly the water pipe which is in the way though, so we could probably reconfigure the water pipe instead. Like so. And we just need to connect this water a little differently. Okay, that should not have disconnected anything. And then we can do it symmetrically on this side as well. Okay, that pipe does not need to continue. Let's have the chips visible as much as possible. Right, so that should all work. Is this build finished then? I think it may be finished. Red chips and... Okay, you got me. <laughs> Thanks, Shandi. Not a Twitch watcher, watcher, just wanted to thank you for all the great YouTube content. Uh, thank you. Eventually a condensed version, a very, very condensed version of this is going to come to YouTube as well. Alright, I kind of feel we got have to align this. Yeah, let's just grab that. Okay, we'll delete that pole. Now it's alignment time. Let's not do this too often. The inventory is full. means the rest of the petroleum gas can theoretically also be aligned. It'd be fun if we could do that through here. Yeah, there's exactly a gap, which is why I did the nine tile thing. Okay, that exactly makes this well, and here we can just do this. The underground sulfuric acid <laughs> goes under the petroleum gas here. Alright, that is some decorative underground belt. It looks a little bit better in my opinion than just side loading a stump. question is, should I do this? I think I will. Visible belts, visible stuff, better. Alright.
Then it's just a matter for me to check how the green chip belts should be connected. We have 2.873, almost three belts of green chips. Uh, they have to go to a to a, a bunch of different uh, things. Right, so almost one belt needs to go into red chips. So I guess one belt we can just connect into red chips with a splitter perhaps. Uh, then we have uh, 1.588 belts which need to go into blue chips. Alright, so I think what I'll do is I'll just uh, prioritize all green chips going into red chips and blue chips and only the overflow will go into the module build. That makes sure uh, we always produce enough red and green. Uh, we will first produce enough blue and red for the Mark 3 modules and Mark 2 modules. And eventually that will fill up and back up and then we'll start module 1 production at full speed. But we cannot produce the Mark 2s and Mark 3s without the Mark 1s. Uh, so let's first fill up the uh, the most expensive elements all the way to here before we actually start uh, full scale module production. That seems the best way to do it. Not sure if it is the best way to do it, but it seems that way. <laughs> all right. So basically, we need to get rid of these. These last beacons are not powered. Maybe I'll just put a fat substation on every one of these lines, like so. Just disconnecting that to see how it looks. So now these builds are connected to each other as well. I guess we can connect these belts here at the bottom like so. Perhaps I also should use just a big one for that. But that seems alright. Uh, we gotta put back the actual module build. We did a blueprint for that. Not that one. We did a blueprint for that, didn't we? Oh yeah, this here, alright. I already scared myself. Now I cannot do that symmetrically because the gap is not large enough. <laughs> so there's only one option. Spent another giant load of robot battery <laughs> to move the whole thing over one tile. Anyone else hear a low pitched hum? It may be the ventilator. I have a fan on in the back. I can probably switch it off by now. Strange, the mic should not pick that up. Okay, that's. This is the softest setting. I have turned the mic a little bit. Should now not be picking up as the mic on the right setting. It is on the right setting. Right. Maybe the uh, maybe it's the laptop fan actually, which is spinning out of control. <laughs> All right. Now we're getting somewhere. I know all this this stuff. So. Let's just bring this guy over here. And we'll just priority output to blue chips and the rest goes on an overflow belt. And I 
guess this guy will be the red chip thing, so we also let's do the bottom one first to blue chips over here. Now we're running out of bells. I guess that does not really matter. I guess let's just get out of the build completely before we do the next thing. So here, similar thing. Output priority to blue chips. The rest of the bells goes here. And then the middle one is output priority to red chips. I should, I guess these should switch around. priority to red chips and that's going to have to side load together with the plastics belt and then copper is gonna have to come in through here as well okay now we have copper over here This is actually not gonna work very well. So let's bring this back like one tile. Probably works a lot better. Now this is only plastics. It's already been hooked up to green chips. Okay, so output priority is on the red chips, so this guy can just continue down. And we need to meet that up with plastics as well. Now we need to see if we can do the sort of a symmetric way. Yes, we can. <laughs> That's a, a little bit stupid, but it works. And if it's stupid and it works, it's not stupid. Okay, that should be all of that. Okay, I need some more belts. Probably need some more underground as well. Let's just go back to the base and restock with the full logistics stuff which we have. Probably should throw away a bunch of this stuff. We're done with beacons, we're done with modules mostly. Let's also throw away the Mark III modules since we're not using those at the moment. Well, it's so nice when you just can shift click everything out of your inventory. And be confident that it's just going to go back in the proper chests which we have set up before. Alright, I think after mining productivity 10 I want to research something else. Maybe some more bot speed again. <laughs> 32k, 64k. Thing with bot speed 10, bot speed 10 is exactly not fast enough to reliably send the bots for my armor when I'm running at full speed with my five legs. All right, bots placed all the belts. 
Alright, pipes are connected. Coal should come from here. Okay, da -da -da, da -da -da. we need furnace area still, but that is a, an afterthought. That is the main design. Okay, so now we have this over here. Since red chips uses up most of the belt of green chips, the fewest chips are going to come from there. And they are from the middle. These are the eventual belts which should go down to modules. If I check my blueprint. I can flip that around, so it does not really matter what is on which side. Okay, it does not really matter. Okay, but we've got red and blue chips coming over here. We've also got red and blue chips coming over here. Still need to connect copper and such, so we need, we need to keep a bit of space. I guess we're just going to come down all the way on the other side. If I was smarter, I would have left myself a little bit more space. If I was really smarter, I would have said more smart, probably. <laughs> Is it more smart or smarter? I think it's more smart, right? <laughs> I'm not smart enough to know that. Alright. Uh, blue chips are going to be on the outside. Blue chips are going to be on the outside here. So... That is not quite going to match up. We're going to have to do a magic little switcheroo here. And we're also going to have to split off red chips. To go to green chips. But for the rest we can just do this. That makes our belt of red and blue chips. And now this should make a belt of red and green chips. I kinda want to merge these. Sort of a funny way, side load like this. Exactly does not fit. I should probably do that then. Now I can switch on my pro ports. I don't have anything major to build. Alright. Set this to red chips. Alright. <laughs> and this guy has got to go in here. We'll take input priority from, from the blue chips, and then the red chips will just slowly back up first. I think that's a good idea, alright. Then this whole thing can go down to the eventual build. So if I switch that off, that should connect something like so. And that is the whole thing completed, I think. And I guess we'll just load these things on a train or something and bring them back to the base. Something like that. Smarter according to this smarter ass. <laughs> I guess eventually we'll get to so stuff like bot speed 15, maybe even 
maybe even more. We'll see once it is sufficient, it is sufficient. Anyway, they won't fly. The distance they can fly just gets capped off anyway, since they use energy not only per time, but also per distance flown. So basically they're just gonna zip around quicker, but for long distances they will need to make the same number of recharges, roughly. So eventually the benefit is gonna wear off. I think I need this a bit more close by. I do want like a small section of bell to see this. Alright, I guess I'm now just uh, again, no bells. God dang it. Just a quick restock. This is why my design area is so close by the resupply area. It's quite easy to just uh, get everything you need again. Alright, that's good. This can also just connect like so. Right, I think this is the entire build complete. Maybe. Uh, build, let's be cautious, version 1. Module build, version 1. Module build, version 1, complete. Alright, now comes the time where we go again into editor mode. Go hook up everything. I did I won't put the furnaces there but you know what maybe I should actually thanks a uh, simple simpler simpler for the prime subscription. Thanks a bunch. I guess I gotta do the furnaces as well because I'm relying on my overclocked smelter type kind of thing. So let's just put that off to the side a bit. Looks like the design area is already not big enough. Uh, so what we will have is we will have like two full belts of ore coming in. And that should turn into slightly more than two belts of iron plates. If we just connect this as well, this is, does not really matter how this is connected. Right, like so. Uh, copper is not important to have the actual smelters because we're gonna just build three belts of copper plates anyway. It's just important, does this system work or not? So copper was the bottom one. I think I still forgot to connect copper to here. Yeah, I still forgot to connect copper to here, so... I guess we'll just connect copper to here as well. Wait, not to here. This is wrong. Copper is supposed to be connected to here. And we forgot to connect plastics. Forgot to connect plastics. Plastics I will connect though. I guess we can come up from the south. That should be plastics. Okay, plastics is connected. Copper will just spawn in. All right. Iron will actually have to connect. So all of the iron, all of these belts have to go to green chips, except one belt that has to go to um, sulfuric acid. Alright, so we have two main belts and then two like overflow belts. I guess we can combine the overflow belts and we'll first split off.
I guess we'll just do priority output for one side. That seems the easiest. We'll do priority output for this one over here. Then we have some leftovers. Okay, we should be using more than half a belt, so this should be able to combine on one belt. Uh, and this is the little bit of overflow. Maybe we'll out the priority to uh, sulfuric acid since that only takes just a little bit. I we just have to connect this to sulfuric acid somehow. Alright, so that is not magically spawned in as well. So we're actually generating all the iron we will generate later on. Uh, we'll save this as a test. If I put test there, I know I've been in editor mode, so the run is not valid anymore. <laughs> I'll have to reload, reload to a point before this. Have my prime, love your vids on YouTube, thanks man. Alright, am I then ready to switch it on? I still need to spawn in oil and water. The rest should be automatic. I'm kinda getting used to this. Uh, editor mod still, so I have to find a bunch of stuff. Uh, this. Okay, that automatically, if you connect it to the right input, it automatically sets it. That's uh, one of the improvements, I guess. Alright, that should be done. I guess everything should work, but it, prob but it probably won't, <laughs> as a disclaimer. Let's, uh, let's just run. First of all, we're going to see the iron furnace in at work. So you can see it runs out of ore, but it never stops working. The new ore is inserted exactly on the correct tick. Well, that's that. So it will take a little bit of time for this furnace to fill up all the belts. After that we should have reliable belts. Here we should have eventually reliable belts of green chips of output. Actually no. Um, because I never... I never uh, set the modules again. The modules are still level 1s because I don't have enough level 3s yet. This should fix that. Right? Maybe not. <laughs> Alright, let's just restart the test then. I thought if I do it in editor mode, it should uh, automatically do it. Maybe not if it's running, we'll see. This has the correct modules. It looks like it does not automatically update the modules. So yeah, let's I just give myself the modules then for now. We need to know if it works. I guess we can test not an editor mode then. 
copper is being spawned in. This iron furnace will eventually fill up with plates. All the others won't fill up with plates. How is the oil doing? We do not have seem to have sulfuric acid. The iron still needs to arrive at the sulfuric acid chemical plant. Uh, okay, uh, this is not working because I never set up the cool one. Uh, let me also set up one of those infinite energy things. Then we can properly speed this up again. Probably should just make it. I should probably should just make this into a blueprint and go into the editor thing. Let's just do that. Uh, I'll just have to put it on here somewhere. Then we'll just load the lab thing. And here we can properly speed up the game a bit because I don't have an entire starter base, uh, which needs updates as well. So now we just grab that blueprint, put it down, uh, power it, I guess we can now switch it on. Let's uh, save this one as that test one. Oh, we have milestones in, in the editor, huh? Okay. I guess... I guess we'll first take a look at this iron over here. So these bells are now slowly, slowly starting to back up. This is now back. Is it backed up? We do seem to get a bit of extra ore on here. Right, I guess we'll just have to wait a bit for uh, everything to fill up. When you do a cold start like this, it can take some time before everything properly backs up, because even though we don't have buffer chests or anything, all the belts still form a buffer as well. So basically this belt needed to fill up, all this iron is not used to make green chips or sulfuric acid, this is just like a giant belt buffer of a couple hundred plates. But if you don't use buffer chests at all, Looks like this is now backing up here already, so that's good. Okay, this seems backed up as well. The like red chips is already fully backed up. Something is going wrong. Uh, it looks like I... <laughs> looks like I... Uh, hooked up the wrong belt, the wrong thing. Over here. Alright, so for now, for now, I'll just do this then. To switch them around. <laughs> I'll, I'll properly fix that later, but we'll just flip around this thing. But for now, let's do this. Uh, save game. Uh, test again. Yes, test. Okay, let's just speed up a bit. Right. Now we should be producing modules. We are producing the Mark IIs. And 
and we are not producing the marked trees because I did not put this in silver here. That's a mistake. We are producing this marked tree, so that's something. Alright, so now the theory is eventually everything should back up. Because this can only produce 10 modules per minute. It is hard limited to produce 10 modules per minute. Which means it's also hard limited to consume a certain amount of resources per minute. And we should be overproducing everything by just a little bit. So eventually everything should back up. It can take a while, but eventually everything should back up. So I guess we'll just speed up time a whole bunch. Let's see if anything is backed up. So this pipe is empty. This pipe is empty. That means we do have enough cracking. Petroleum gas is not empty, but it's also not full. So perhaps that's still backing up as well. But cracking seems sufficient. These things, this thing is working slowly, but it should work slowly. We only need one, like 0.9 something of this one. This one is not modulated. This one is modulated, but this one is slower than this one. So, uh, sulfuric acid is slower than sulfur. So it does not matter if this one is accidentally modulated. So yeah, this is also filling up very slowly. So I probably should be output priority chips anyway. Probably it already doesn't matter. Yeah, it does not really seem to matter already. But how is it going here? Red chips have backed up. At least until this splitter here. It is backing up here as well. Okay, so first of all we should, we should see red chips back up all the way to here. Eventually, maybe. The chips are not really backing up. <laughs> yeah, the chips are not don't seem to be backing up, so I probably did something wrong. Maybe we are over consuming red chips on blue chips until blue chips is backing up. Maybe blue chips is the first one to back up. And that is going to require a lot of red chips to b actually back up those blue chips. So let's just try to speed up as much as possible. See if blue chips will back up more and more. It does seem so. But they need to back up all the way to the assembler before an appropriate amount of red chips. Okay, now they start to back up here. So that means once they start backing up, we'll switch off one or two of those. And red chips are going to be no longer over consumed. And that should give red chips a chance to start backing up eventually as well. So that may still take a while. Now you can see module 3 production. We are almost there, 4.7 a minute, so we designed around 5 a minute, but at currently we're doing 4.7 a minute because red chips is not yet backed up. Maybe maybe there's a fundamental mistake in red chips, that could be. Now this guy is not active all the time, this output full, output full. So yeah, we need 11, we need 11 point something and currently we have 12. So it makes sense that this guy is not working all the time. Right, plastics does not seem to be backing up, so perhaps we have a plastics problem. It does seem like we have a plastics problem. Alright, here is the problem of the build. Maybe already somebody saw it in chat, but yeah, this one is not working. So it makes sense that we are not producing what we should be producing. Alright, 
So the easy thing would be to fix this right now, but that means we don't no longer have a cold start. Which means everything else is backed up. While it should not have backed up, we are we are just not producing enough. So we need to reload again, fix the mistakes, and do another cold start. It should reach it should reach 10 modules per minute on a cold start, and hopefully not before forever. But yeah, this is a pretty obvious mistake. We need like six point something plastics, but we only had five point something plastics because this guy was disabled all that time. Yeah, I do have my strange uh, band over there. I think that was the only mistake though, so let's go again. We'll just uh, try speeding up. As much as we can, we probably cannot speed up this much. Oh, now it's working. We did actually um, prioritize green chips to go to here. So until blue chips is backed up, we won't have enough green chips to feed everything, likely. It already does seem a lot better though. Plastics is now backed up like it should. The red chip output is full at the moment. Yeah, this, it will take a little bit of time to self-balance. We started producing red chips too early, blue chips too late, so red chips was over, over backed up for a while. That is gonna fix itself pretty soon. I guess I'll just put the production cover on there, module 3, for one hour, let's do 10 minutes and we'll just speed up the game. Okay, this was my cheating end of module, so that will disappear now. Oh yeah, there was one more mistake, I forgot about that mistake. Insert red product. Yeah, thanks guys. <laughs> yeah, the rightmost has three beacons, but we need um, we need like six point a little bit. So this is six fully modulated ones and a little bit. Doesn't matter if there's only three beacons. Right, I forgot this guy. That is correct. The annoying thing is I probably should remake the blueprint after this with the fixes and then import the blueprint into the playthrough. Or we can remember it. There was not a lot wrong. What was wrong? This was wrong. This was wrong. And one inserter. So three things. Three things we need to fix. If I can remember three things, we should be good. Let's see how close we are to 5 now. We're still not still not quite there. I did not save after doing that. I did not. Oh god, the kid crack crack and the crack. This hurts man. Yeah, I know. Alright. Two fixes, right? Let's do all three fixes. Fix number one. Fix number two. Fix number three was this. This is done. Save. Test. We get pretty close though, so... We get pretty close on a broken uh, on a broken build, so that is not bad. We just gotta see how, how these things back up. Oh, well, pretty much from the start, approximately. All right, so even though, even though not everything is backed up just yet, it already starts producing the ten modules we wanted per minute from the very start. Oh, that's going to be fast, man! So, so many modules. Nice, nice, nice. All right. Okay, that's good. There is almost no startup time before maximum production is reached, like so. Let's check again the individual pumps. This eventually should back up petroleum gas. It's 
are about 60% full. This eventually should back up, that will take some time though. And light and heavy oil should be empty all the time. Alright, we need to check copper wire here though. Okay, so this copper wire may not be working as good as I wanted to. Let's try to do the triple thing. And we'll see if copper wire production goes up. There does seem like to be a single pixel difference here. Okay, so it does seem that there are the belts is fuller with three of these inserts. So perhaps I'll just add them. It makes the last one work a little bit more reliably. Output full though. Thanks Tired X Lotto as well for the Prime subscription. Okay, I gotta check my red chip numbers here. Alright, I need 0 0.64, 0 0.64 blue belts, 0 0.666 red belts, uh, sorry, sorry, 0 0.666 blue belts is one red belt. So with 0 0.64 requirement, I should be able to uh, output this on red belts and get away with it. What I could do is I could just alter the blueprint a bit and just do this for the last inserter. And that is gonna back up there. Then I can see this backing up over here. But at least we have a blue belt going on. So I won't be accidentally underproducing because of inserters missing insert chips in the small gaps um, in the blueprint uh, the small gaps in the belts they can just miss if, I, if a, a gap passes right when they swing back to take more chips the belt could be uncompressed now we don't need a compressed red half red belt but pretty close to it so this may be safer and we'll see this back up eventually. So I think I'll make this change as well. But yeah, pretty much the build is working. From the get-go. Five a minute, five sharp a minute. Okay, let's try to get to one hour. Just try speeding this thing up. Looks like it will take a minute to get there. I want to see a red, okay, this red chips has backed up here now. I guess we're naturally prioritizing red chips from one side due to... I don't know, yeah, one, one, of, these, one of these is prioritized for this belt and the other one is prioritized for this belt. So that is where the imbalance comes from, but they should be able to flow all onto both belts uh, eventually if there's like, if, uh, yeah, both of these belts can go to both of these belts, so that is good. We do see, at the moment, red and green chips here are backed up, blue chips are backed up, red chips are backed up, looks like everything is backed up as far as it needs to be. Eventually everything should back up. No, 
Oh yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, it is not of crucial important that the build works 100% all the time, you know. It is just making modules. If it was science per minute, we want to be very, very sure that it works 100% of the time, 100% reliable. But for something like which makes modules, it does not really matter if we end up with 9,998 modules or 10,002 modules, right? It is just a... Uh, yeah. It's just a lot of modules which we need, but it looks like reliable. 300 of each module per hour is 5.0 per minute. And we are balancing between 300 and 301. Those are rounding errors. The setup cannot go over 300. And it cannot go under 300 if it is working 100% of the time. So it looks like everything is working 100% of the time, 100% reliable. At least with the spawned in copper ore. Once we need to actually divide three belts of copper. No, that just should be a, a technicality. We, three belts of copper is roughly 10% more than we need. So copper should back up as one of the first things. Before iron even. Well, let's check this out. So yeah, we definitely see the overproduction of the iron on these two belts coming in. This could actually benefit from output priority to the right as well. Because this is not a, a big uh, a big backlog to uh, sideload this belt over here. It could do with a bit more uh, But yeah, generally everything is looking, everything is looking perfect. Alright, so four fixes. One fix, two fix, plastic fix, and red chip fix. Four fixes to go. I'll just save this world here as well. Um, so I can come back to it. How long am I streaming today? Probably not that long anymore. It's already past midnight here. Um, I did what I wanted to do at this very moment, really. I finished the design of the Mark III module build. And it has been reliably producing five modules per minute. And five Mark III modules per minute for one hour now from a cold start so that's good five of those means 25 of those mark twos means 100 of those mark ones so that's a lot of modules looks like the first uh, build is working nicely okay so let me load the actual game see if i can Remember the fixes, the first fix, plastic chemical plant not connected, uh, fix number one, fix number two, whilst one inserter is missing over here, there's fix number two, fix number three, <laughs> uh, this thing was mixed up. That's an easy fix. We can just do this and this. That will fix that. Fix number four was changing up the output over here to sideload the belt instead. We could keep this inserter as well. Alright, that is, that is what it's going to be. The plumbing around the outside is not, um, does not, it's not going to win a beauty prize. But hey, what you're going to do? It's a real life build and it's a, a small build with a lot of, a lot of individual steps. 
We have advanced oil processing, which requires water and oil. Outputs three different things. Two of those things needs to get cracked into different things, which also requires water. That all needs to match up. All these things need to match up to each other. Each other with petroleum gas, it needs to go to here. Water needs to go to here. So like acid needs to go to the entire build. <sighs> I think you get the point. <laughs> so yeah, we need a lot of separate pipes uh, for that. All right, but in general, the build does not look so bad. So I think we can get rid of the blueprint. I think we can just uh, select new contents. Do this. Right, there was actually one more thing which we need to do. Um, I need to connect plastics. Copper will connect once we actually build it, but plastics will have to connect right now. I guess that's going to be copper spot. Yeah, that's going to be good enough. Right, how about lights? Do we need some more lights? Perhaps plastic needs some lights as well. really like to have the light on the outside, it's too, too jarring here. Right. Ah, fix number. Yeah, more copper wire out certain tanks. I'll check chat real quick because probably I may have missed something else still. Need to get rid of this one then for the symmetry. Yeah, this is okay, I think we have enough lights now. We may have some light on this uh, splitter switcheroo here. Perhaps behind the substation to kind of hide the lights. Does this reach? This does reach, so we don't need that long, that uh, big power pole. We don't need that. I guess we'll keep this anyway. I think that's going to be the blueprint. Let me check this. Iron belt to sulfuric acid, that is correct as well. But that is things we those will, will hook up once we know the act, where the actual furnaces are coming from. So then we're going to do that, like that output priority stuff which I just did. That is easy to redo. So that's going to be okay. But first we got to know where the resources are coming from. I'm going to actually build it in place on Sunday. When it's like the real stream, <laughs> like the real weekly stream with the things. I just want to get these weekday streams. Uh, I want to get the most of the designing out of the way, I think. And then on the Sundays, we can actually build it and see everything work in proper action on the map. So yeah, this is going to be a new blueprint. We're going to do this. Select new contents. We're going to do this. Uh, this. Uh, is everything. No tiles, just the uh, raw stuff. I'm gonna keep my clock set up even though I'm now doubting if we actually need it. Yeah, but yeah, the furnaces are not included and the pickup is not included. I think we're gonna build a train line to build the, uh, to bring all the modules back to the base and we'll just store them somewhere. Alright, so let's save this, I think. Uh, 10 modules per minute. Alright, pretty cool. Okay, I'm also gonna just copy some of these blueprints, which I want to use later, perhaps. Yeah, I think I'll just copy those. You know what, perhaps... Uh, mm, I don't know what to do. Should I merge those books? 
Because this setup I'm kind of probably not going to use anymore. Since it has the blue inserters and that kind of stuff. I kind of want to use the new one. And uh, I think probably clocking still should be good. I'm just missing something. I mean, the whole community cannot be wrong that clocking should be better than not clocking. So I'm probably just missing something. Maybe I'm just doing the wiring too inefficient or something. I don't know. I just figured out how to make an actual clock <laughs> and uh, how to set the values. But I don't really know the ins and outs, of course, after one day of, uh, of messing around with it. I guess I'll just... Uh, I'll just leave those in here. I'll just grab the blueprints from here. Yeah. Alright. <coughs> I guess I'll just leave this up. Or not, perhaps. You know, if I just let the spider deconstruct this. Yeah, I could borrow out, like, some robots to the spider. I'll switch off my robot and I can basically issue deconstruct commands and the spider bots will pick up everything and then I have the entire thing ready to be deployed. Let me save though. Uh, module, actually module build v1, it's still version 1, fixed. Uh, ready to go. Alright. So let's check if this works. If I deconstruct all of this. Nothing is happening here. Uh, nothing is happening here. Okay, now, now it is happening. There was a small delay, looks like. So we just need to maneuver the spider around. The spider is gonna pick up all of the stuff. It's gonna take him a while because he only controls 50 bots, or I control 300. I'm just gonna go quickly back to the base, restock my stuff. Alright. Pick up the close by stuff first. This bot is so annoying. <laughs> ah, fishing tonight. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll end with some fishing. I think I just made the end game save already. I'm not sure if I. I think I probably will show this build off on the uh, Sunday starter stream stills before actually moving it, but yeah, at least we know the spider thing works. Does it fit in its inventory though? That may be questionable. It may be time to start making a spider army. There's one more thing we should check. Let's uh, bring the spider over here for a bit. How is low density structures doing? Are we backing up? Yes, low density structures have backed up. That's great news. Uh, they are in here. That means we should be making more spider drones. Do we already have 10? Oh, one is being made right now. Look at that. That is coincidence. Those are not being crafted that often. That was spider tron number 9. So we made 3 spider drones already since I fixed the low density structures. Or since I upgraded low density structures. Looks like on Sunday we can make a spider armor, uh, a spider army, <laughs> and 
we can basically make like a couple spiders with different functions. Like we could just have a couple spiders followers which have some different logistics requests set up. Like one could request like tons of belts and underground belts, so we always have some of those. One could request like inserters, assemblers, chemical plants, oil refineries. And we could just utilize those spiders inventories to design stuff instead of me having to carry around everything. For instance, I only have 20 beacons, that is not enough to design stuff. You could have a beacon spider and a roboport spider, that kind of stuff. And it would make it a lot easier to design the stuff. And if we run out of inventory space, we basically send the that spider back to the base to resupply and just come back. And we can just design uninterrupted. So that's probably going to happen, spider army. But yeah, module 3 area uh, designed. I'm going to give myself a check mark for that. Uh, check mark. Where are we? Check mark. That's not really going to count because I already saved, but <laughs> I need to load that save. Actually, yeah, we need to do fishing. Fishing needs to be saved. So we calculated we need roughly 16,000 modules. Plus or minus 50%, probably. <laughs> Maybe even more, but this is the order of magnitude which we need. So with 600 modules per hour, that is going to take roughly 30 hours, I guess, to get this amount of modules. But yeah, if we check module production in the actual base. We are doing three modules per hour, which is actually quite good. It is way more than I thought we could be producing in our base. But on the other side, I probably, I may, I may disable those. So more of the other stuff can get crafted. Because we are using up tons and tons of red chips to make these modules, which also could be used to make like more roboports. These are starved of red chips. Beacons are starved of red chips. And if I'm gonna use that clocked and sail thing, we're gonna need like a ton. In general, we're gonna need a ton of second sailors. Which right now we have enough of, but yeah. The, just the point is, uh, red chips should be going to a lot of other stuff. Than just... Uh, whoa. Red chips should be going to a lot of other stuff than modules, so we may up, we may just free up the base modules to make um, I did do the blueprint with uh, Let's finish one sentence first, shall we? We may I forgot the sentence already. Got <laughs> Yeah, we may switch off the Mark III models here, so red chips can be used for all the other stuff. And we just uh, will produce the Mark III models in the outpost. I forgot the second line. <laughs> when is the next Warptorio video? Probably on YouTube. Probably... Uh, not this Friday, but the Friday after. That is going to be a long one, though. I have I've been trying a new method for recording. Uh, I don't know. I don't really. I'm not really that pleased with the result, but I'm going to upload it like that anyway. So there's been a lot of microphone issues with the uh, with the recording. I've been trying to fix it in different ways. Now I found a way which probably gives a better microphone sound, but. I'm recording live uh, instead of writing a scripted voiceover. It's kind of semi-scripted. I do write some lines, but I try to to tell them when I'm playing, which is kind of hard for me. As you may notice on stream, I'm kind of looking for words a lot. <laughs> so yeah, not really sure. I may just have a faulty microphone, I don't know. Because the, the the original microphone, or like the original, the microphone I'm using at my other location is exactly the same type and model. A few 
few external factors are different, but it should not lead to such a different uh, recording quality. So yeah. We'll see. I'll just bring out uh, Warptorio 8.5 as I now recorded it with the new approach. And uh, yeah, that's probably, I won't repeat that. I, I'm not really liking how the video is turning out too much. It's still, it's still, it's still an okay video, but meh. I like the fully, the, the ones where I do a full voice script afterwards better because I have more time to think about what to say. I have more time to, uh, to think of funny jokes or creative uh, word orders, <laughs> that kind of stuff. Whereas when, when I'm doing it like semi live, that is not really happening. How are the biters doing? The biters have been making a ton of expansions again. So we may do a combat spider thing as well. They are not really that close to the pollution just yet, but yeah, definitely something to worry about. Alright, let's load up the save one more time. We'll go on a fishing trip and then uh, after we come back from the fishing trip, we will basically uh, yeah, we'll, we'll end the stream. Uh, I do need to upgrade my blueprint. Uh, I need to upgrade to... Uh, I need to apply this upgrade planner. How do I do that? There should be a way. Alright, I did it, somehow. <laughs> I downgraded from Mark 1s to Mark 3s. My upgrade planner works a bit strange. But thanks uh, Bruce, Bruce McNamara for the 4th month subscription as well. Alright, so this one is finished. You can see we require, indeed, roughly the same amount uh, of speed modules compared to productivity modules so far. And we have been using mostly these double beacon row build, the super fast one, so it's actually good to know. Of course we're using a bunch of those only for this, but for the models themselves, but in general, yeah, not too bad. So it would take this setup roughly 30 minutes to produce the modules for itself, if we can get started with Mark III modules. We also need a lot of extra Mark III modules still for the furnace builds, so we are not... The, the real cost is going to be higher. Uh, let's check how much we need for a furnace stack. So, this is not a honest, like a honest, this is not a true representation because we can stack these and we won't need... Basically the more we stack this, the more this number approaches only half this. So let's say 26 productivity and 32 speed modules if we infinitely stack this. In reality though, now we're just going to build like 5 furnace stacks or so. So that's another 125-ish productivity modules and let's say 160-ish speed modules. Alright, but it's definitely doable to get that set up. Uh, I, uh, how much do I have available right now? Okay, another 94. Alright, I don't have enough to set up set it up fully, but I can uh, I can prod and speed mod the most important stuff. Already with what I have right now, so that is good. Um, for now though, I'll just throw that away again. Alright, I should switch back to the fast walking thing, if we're gonna do the bot deconstruction thing. 
I guess we'll, yeah, we'll just deconstruct this in the next stream. For now, we need to go to a new lake. I guess we'll go to this one. We could go up here and continue fishing. We last time fished empty this area until over here, I think. So let's go over here. And we'll do a bunch of fishing. Let's check in the meantime how has it been going with science for the stream. We haven't checked it even once. It looks like we still have this. Uh, this, is, this was the low density problem amplified basically. A small dip in utility science over the last 10 hours. I think it's the second time we did that. Maybe not. But yeah, that's definitely an ugly dip. Still barely holding on to 63 signs a minute. <laughs> So the base has been doing well. We have launched 77 rockets so far. Research has been ongoing. Uh, strong ever. All the time basically. Why? <laughs> no, I'm not fishing for UPS optimization. On the contrary, I guess. I'm basically transporting all of these idle fish into the place where they are not idle. I guess, uh, yeah. Once, we won't need true UPS optimization for a long time, so all of these things I can afford to do for the moment. It's only when I will actually, even with a 1k science per minute base, it's gonna run just fine, despite having this idle reactor belting this stuff around, uh, calculating heat every tick uh, for the entire reactor and that stuff. Eventually, once we have the 10,000 science per minute base and we're ready to switch it on, we're just gonna deconstruct all the UPS, uh, all the other stuff that um, eats up UPS, like this entire tileable nuclear reactor is gonna be gone. No more heat calculations, steam calculations, water calculations. We're gonna have solar by that point. We're gonna deconstruct the starter thing. I guess we're gonna take out all the fish from the lake, if we are somewhere close by at least. I think these uh, don't take updates. If they're idle, they don't take updates. They're just like... saved. But yeah, everything... I guess we're just gonna... Uh, I don't know if we'll deconstruct the actual starter base. I don't think so, but... All the unnecessary UPS consumers are gonna are gonna go. But for now though, we are still fine. Alright, not too many fish in the sea. I cannot let go the deconstruct order over the weapon system. Uh, probably should have made a little bit more space in my inventory. Let's switch off logistics request. I can throw everything in the spider. Except for the fish and the bots. And I guess the deconstruction planner. Fish per minute, yeah, yeah. Too bad fish doesn't start with an S. I could have legitimately made a, like a, a fake uh, troll video. <laughs> I think it would be quite hard to fish up 10,000 fish per minute though. Unless we do it at the starter lake once we have, uh, we have enough fish in there already. Let's check how many fish are in the starter lake. 16,000. Actually, one, each fish counts like five, so actually there's like 3,200 black dots in there. But yeah, 16,000 fish. 
for the statistics it counts like 16,000 I would imagine. is going it's actually going not too great we only have three and a half thousand fish so far ups undersea creatures per second <laughs> i guess underwater creatures undersea creatures would be like uh, like those worms from june or something which can uh, go underground under the sea <laughs> Alright, let's uh, ignore the bots a bit. I'll probably run out of juice though if I run off too far. Yeah, like that guy. Alright, how much did we have? 16,000 I said. This is gonna bring us over 20, over 20k. I guess we can fish empty all these lakes as well. No mercy, no mercy. Everything has to be fished empty. <laughs> 5,000 fish. Fish would take 10k fish a minute would take as much resources as 833k space signs per minute. Uh, okay, like in terms of UPS updates or something, or how should I inter interpret this uh, statistic? The problem is. Uh, we fish empty this stuff and fish is not going to come back because all of these are idle, they are not moving. <laughs> 10k spidertrons a minute, that's actually a le legitimate goal. <laughs> like I am. I think once we circle back on this peninsula we'll call it for the fishing. We're getting there. <laughs> An inventory full of fish. Ah, like so, fish recipe uh, by launching uh, space signs in a rocket. I see. I think you can launch. You can get like 100 uh, fish will launch if you put enough space signs back inside. Is that 12? I forgot the actual number. I think if you launch one space science pack you get one fish. But if you launch more than one space science pack you get more fish up to a full stack. I, I thought it was uh, one space science, uh, one fish per space science launched with a maximum of um, 100 because that's the stack size for fish but i may be wrong about that
Ah, you can. I think you can get uh, more than 12. If you do like this inserter clocking, you probably can make it so, make it so that uh, like nine inserters insert at the same tick, and you can launch a uh, hundred fish like like that. Or like you can launch a hundred space signs like that. For what purpose do you need an inventory full of fish? <laughs> there, there is no purpose. No, there is a purpose. I, I don't say it's a good purpose, but there is a purpose. You'll see it in roughly three minutes, I suppose. I guess we'll leave we'll leave that part for a future fishing trip. Soon we're just gonna have to explore more just in order to find enough fish to satisfy our fish craving <laughs> madness. Now we'll just fish empty this little pond over here and we'll head back to the base. like we are completely empty here. We already collected these small ponds, all right. So, yeah, I guess that's enough fish. I guess that's enough fish. I don't even have exactly one more space for my spider Tron reboot. I know that was actually set to, uh, to a slot, so I always have space for that, so that's good. All right. What else can we look at? Let's look at the nuclear, the nuclear fuel powered cursed nuclear fuel delivery train. Uh, show train on the map. Can actually send it. Right, so it's first gonna turn around. <laughs> That's probably one of the stranger train designs out there. Yeah, yeah, we do have, there will be like some trains in the space science base. We already have one. This counts like a train. It's supplies power. Alright, so this train just turned the route so it can stick this end into here so it can unload for the nuclear reactor because that is exactly only what falls inside the logistics network there and then we just uh, go back now we'll we're loading this cargo wagon at the home base and before we depart again we'll again have to turn around to stick this cargo wagon into the unloading bay at the tileable nuclear reactor Alright, so yeah, there's gonna be trains, but they're all gonna be cursed. I'm not gonna build a single normal train, I don't think. All of them gonna be like dumb or stupid or cursed or whatever. Alright, let's check how much uh, 10k raw fish uh, is on me. Uh, I want to check how much fuel cells we have. 18,000 fuel cells and 5k used up ones um, let's see it is still not 160 hours of playtime so we we are still good 265 in here we still have 2000 more to go 2150 or something 
before we need to do something about that. How much power are we using actually? 600 megawatts still, yeah, not a lot. Not a lot of power still. Um, I'm going to give myself the check mark again, just because I deserve it. Here we go. <laughs> check mark. Oh, 100,000 utility signs. Right at the moment I give myself the check mark. That is a sign I'm doing it right. <laughs> but probably not too far off from 100k production signs. In that case. Actually, we are still 15,000 production signs off. We did a lot of infinite researches concerning damage upgrades. Uh, I guess they're up here. Like energy weapons damage, we did like two infinite researches. Explosion damage, we did three of them. And all of those do not uh, require purple signs, but they do require this yellow signs. So we are a bit ahead on yellow signs and we're just gonna be ahead on yellow signs all the time. Alright, here is the reason why I need more fish. This is uh, not a normal amount of fish which spawns in your starting pond. And we're gonna have an even more not normal amount of fish in our starting pond. Basically, yeah, <laughs> we can just drop fish all around. All those fish we collected are just gonna go in the starting pond until we just have a black, just a black pond. Not not black by pollution, but just black by number of fish living in here. Right, you can see the number down here going down. We already dropped 6,000 more fish in the lake. I wonder when this is gonna lead to UPS problems. So far, it seems alright still. Alright, that's all the fish. <laughs> a new blob of fish has been released. It will, I wish the pond was a bit smaller though. It's gonna take a long time before this fully fills up. But now we've got... 26,000 fish in the lake. <laughs> and those guys are gonna swim out all over the place. So yeah, this is going to be my end game save then. End save 26k fish and 100k yell signs. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I underestimated this. I thought we could get this blacked out quite easily. But now I'm not so sure. We already fished empty. A sizable chunk of this and uh, most of this lake here already. We have not visited this side or this side just yet. This is still pretty much occupied by biters at this point. So yeah, eventually we're gonna have to branch out. Also because of pollution reasons we need to clear more land. So we are playing with biters. We just uh, don't have problems with our neighbors because we took the, Aust the Australian concept to having neighbors, you know, the, the outback Australian concept. Your nearest neighbor lives like 1000 miles away. That is the kind of planet <laughs> we like to live on here in this Factorio world. We don't like them settling too close by and sniffing up our pollution and sending in attacks. Because we, we have an undefended base, basically. Alright, I'm gonna load the safe. So we can see the fish swim apart on like two times or three times speed. I'm going to say goodnight to all of you. Thanks everybody for watching. Thanks for uh, <laughs> thanks for chatting and for subscribing and for uh, helping me fix the mistakes I made. Uh, join me for a next stream on Friday. We will do the opposite of this base. We are going to do the um, the 12 by 9 tile map <laughs> in a stupidly OCD optimized way. Man, these fish are trippy. <laughs> Holy moly, it looks like all sorts of... Well, yeah, it's like, like an optical illusion almost. <laughs> yeah, Friday, smallest map possible, and then Sunday again, the biggest map possible, this one. Where we're gonna actually build the Mark 3 module thing and possibly start designing 
the solar panel and accumulator build, which is going to be sort of a similar build as the Mark III module build. A similar dedicated base uh, where we're going to produce a sufficient amount of solar panels and accumulators so we can later power the 10,000 science per minute base. We won't need it for the 1,000 science per minute base that we can do in nuclear, but for the 10k SPM we're going to go solar. So we need to start producing those things early because solar is expensive and we're going to need like definitely over a million solar panels. Thanks Duano as well for the uh, Amazon Prime subscription. Yeah, thanks for tuning in even on this uh, <laughs> unannounced stream. I'm going to zoom out a bit and we're going to see the fish go spread out over all the lake I guess. I'm going to keep the time lapse on for just a bit more. Uh, I think if I do this, yeah, we should get a bit more contrast, so that is good. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I will see you all next time.